Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Ironworker Gaming Channel. I am Ironworker814, and thank you for joining me for another Destiny 2 PvP weapon review, where we take a look at pros, cons, stats, damage numbers, and how to acquire the weapon. As with all my weapon reviews, I keep lower skill and newer players in mind while making them. The weapon we're taking a look at today is Izanagi's Burden. And I know, you're probably thinking, Ironworker, my man. Izanagi's is a PvE gun. Have you lost your mind? And I mean, yeah, I lost it a long time ago, but that's, uh, that's neither here nor there. Because this is another viewer-requested weapon review, asked for by Liam Lother. So I was more than happy to pick up this PvE powerhouse and take it into the Crucible to see what it could do. If at any point in this video you feel like helping a fellow Guardian out, liking and subscribing are two completely free and easy ways to do so, but please only do this if you are enjoying the content and feel it worthy of your support. So Izanagi's Burden has never really been highly regarded in PvP, but in PvE it is still a top tier choice, even after a blanket nerf to sniper rifles and a direct nerf to Izanagi's reload. So how is it that a weapon that is so overwhelmingly strong in one side of Destiny 2 sees so little use on the other side? And is it really that bad of an option for the Crucible, or is it just a little bit underappreciated? We're going to take a good hard look at Izanagi's, but first, we'll check out how to acquire the weapon for those who have not done so already. Okay, this is going to be a very condensed version of how to obtain this gun. I'm working on a full video of how to get Izanagi's, so check back later if you want the extremely detailed version of this. First, make sure you have access to the Black Armory Forges, and then visit Ada-1 and pick up the Mysterious Box quest. Next, you're going to need to get one key from each of the four forges by shooting the two shield drones between rounds and achieving maximum temper. After completing a forge, open the chest, you will get a key, and you need to manually insert this into the mysterious box. Next, you'll have to complete a rare Black Armory Bounty. These drop randomly when turning in a weekly or daily Black Armory Bounty. Once finished, you'll need to complete the Shattered Throne Dungeon and then do a special version of the Pyramidian Strike. Once that is finished, head to the EDZ, kill civics, and then head back to Ada to get your gun. Like I said, very condensed version, but full guide is on its way. Izanagi's Burden is an exotic kinetic sniper rifle that falls into the adaptive frame archetype. This sniper rifle shoots at 90 rounds per minute and has 4 rounds in the magazine. The stats are pretty well on par with other adaptive frame snipers, except for the fact this has a little less scope zoom. Izanagi's comes with the perk No Distractions on it, which is going to help mitigate some flinch after aiming down sights for a few moments. The intrinsic trait is Honed Edge, and basically how this works, it takes however many rounds you have left in your magazine, you hold reload, and it'll smash them all into one bullet. The more rounds you have in the magazine, the more damage and range that single shot will have. For the damage numbers, Izanagi is going to do 387 points of damage on a critical hit, while a body shot will net you 131 points of damage. So, time to kill on a precision hit is obviously instantaneous, and the body shot time to kill is 0.67 seconds, requiring you to land two shots. Now, I'm not going to go over the damage for every stack of Honed Edge, but it does give Izanagi some extra utility in the Crucible, and we'll talk about that now as we get into the pros. Now, while every single sniper rifle in the game can down a Guardian with a single headshot, the adaptive frame sniper rifles can double body a Guardian to put him down. The rapid fire frame snipers cannot do this. But Izanagi's gives you the ability to down a Guardian in a single body shot. If you consume a full magazine with the Honed Edge perk, meaning all four rounds, landing that one shot on a Guardian will guarantee you a kill doing 328 points of damage on a body shot. This is something that no other sniper rifle in the game is capable of. You'll also be able to down a Guardian in their super by landing a critical hit with Honed Edge times 2. While you can one-shot supers with the aggressive frame sniper rifles, Izanagi's is the only adaptive frame sniper rifle with the capability of doing this. Also, the scope has a little less zoom than other adaptive frame snipers, letting you see a bigger chunk of the playing field in front of you. Then, checking in with the hidden stats on light.gg, aim assist comes in at a pretty solid 62. And feel free to throw a sniper rifle targeting mod on to boost that number a little bit more. 
So all in all, Izanagi's is a perfectly serviceable sniper rifle for PvP and it has some very unique characteristics, but with these come some drawbacks and we're going to get into those now. The first big strike against Izanagi's is the fact that the adaptive frame archetype of sniper rifles is kind of in no man's land right now. To explain this, let's look at your other two options. First off, the aggressive frame sniper rifles like Bite of the Fox or Evoker can down a Guardian in their super with one critical shot by default. And while you are giving up some aim assist and you do have a smaller mag size, it's only costing you one bullet to try to down a Guardian in their super, and you don't have to worry about having honed edge proc before trying to do so. On the other end of the spectrum, you have your rapid fire frame snipers. While they're not nearly as effective against supers as your aggressive frames, they do offer a larger magazine size and an increased fire rate. On top of that, they have much better handling, reload, and aim assist stats when compared to all other sniper rifles. And aim assist is key. That makes it much easier to land headshots with guns like Apostate, Supremacy, or Twilight Oath. With adaptive frame snipers, you're kind of giving up the benefits of both of the other archetypes and not really getting much out of the middle ground where it's sitting in. Next, while the Izanagi's can one-shot body shot a Guardian with Honed Edge times 4 is it really worth it? I mean, that's costing you a lot of ammo just to secure one kill. And then what happens if you miss that one shot? You basically just flushed four rounds down the crapper. And then you have to reload your gun because it's empty. And while you absolutely can down a Guardian in their super with Honed Edge times 2 this usually takes a little more positioning and planning. A lot of times when you hear a super pop and it's moving your way, you have to react, like right now. And unless you already had Honed Edge times 2 proc and ran over a green ammo brick recently or something, you're only gonna get one shot at taking out this super. So here again, I mean, uh, don't miss. And the last thing is, Izanagi's is taking up your exotic slot. And in my opinion, there are just so many good legendary sniper rifles out there to choose from that the benefits of equipping Izanagi's in PvP just don't feel worth it. So the verdict, would I recommend using Izanagi's in the Crucible? Probably not. Not to say that it's bad, I mean, if for whatever reason you really love this gun and you're just clicking heads all day long with this thing, keep at it my man. I mean, I just feel, in general, there are a lot of better options out there. And if you're not dead set on using Izanagi's in the Crucible, you may want to explore these other avenues. But the thing I love most about Destiny is the fact that every gun feels so unique, and you'll never know which gun is going to be the perfect gun for you if you don't give them all a chance. So if you've made it to this point in the video and you did enjoy it, please consider giving it a like, and also consider subscribing to this channel to see more reviews, guides, and discussions, all brought to you by yours truly. If you'd like to catch me live, I do stream on Twitch from time to time. You can head over there, look for Ironworker814, give me a follow, and you will get notified whenever I go live. If you'd like to contact me, the absolute best way to do so is commenting down below. I read and respond to all my comments because if it is worth your time to leave me a comment, it is worth my time to respond to you. And with all that being said, I'd like to thank you for spending a piece of your day checking out my content. You guys are awesome, and I will catch you on the next one.